Welcome to the Distance Learning Kitchen, where we put a little heart into everything we make. Today, we are going to be making the best fluffy buttermilk pancakes ever. They're an example of a quick bread, and before I go over the mise en place, I just want to go over measuring flour with you. I've already measured one cup of flour, and I need one more cup. And so just to remind you, we want to stir our flour before we spoon it into our dry measuring cup. And remember that when we do this, we want to make sure that we mound the flour over the measuring cup. And once we do that, we then need to take a straight edge, and I just take my spoon, why dirty something else? and I just turn it up on its side and I scrape the excess flour right back into my canister and there we go, I have my two cups of flour. All right guys, I'm so excited to share this recipe with you and I really believe you will like it. Um, you'll more than like it, you're gonna really enjoy eating it. All right, so let's go over mise en place. We have two cups of all-purpose flour I have two teaspoons of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda. I have a half a teaspoon of salt. I have two tablespoons of granulated sugar. And in a moment, I'm going to pour the buttermilk in here to show you um, what the buttermilk looks like compared to regular milk that we would drink um, or have on our cereal. I need two large eggs and I need some vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla. All right. Um, couple things. This is the buttermilk. Buttermilk is a soured milk. And when I say soured, I don't mean spoiled. It's the way that the milk sugar, and look at the, look at the thickness here. You can really see how nice and thick this is. So if you um, substitute regular milk for this, you're not going to get the thickness of the pancakes, you're not going to have the acid to react with our leavening agents. I'm not going to put this away because I might need to add a little bit more liquid to our batter before we put them on the griddle. So I now have the buttermilk. I just want to show you a couple of things about baking soda and baking powder. This is probably the brand of baking soda we are most familiar with seeing. But there are other brands out there as well, and they look a little bit different. And this is also baking soda. And I want you to notice something too. It's the same brand. One is baking soda, one is baking powder. They act very differently in our baked ingredient, in our baked products. So do not get them uh, mixed up. Another thing that I want to show you is that you should be turning these over and checking your expiration date. I pulled this out of the cabinet and saw that it says my expiration date, is, it says it's best if it's used by July 25th, 2020. Well, it's October, so it's time for this to go into the trash. All right, so I have new baking powder and so everything should be just fine. All right, what I wanna do is go ahead and get my eggs cracked. And then I just won't have to do this later. All right, so the recipe tells us that we need to take our flour and um, all of our dry ingredients, as a matter of fact, and put them into a sifter and sift them into a large bowl. Here's our large bowl. Here is our sifter. And here's our flour. I think I'm going to need that spoon. And what I like to do is to just put some of the flour in my sifter. I then like to take my baking powder and my baking soda and my salt. And I can even do the sugar. And I like to put them in the middle. And then I like to add some more flour. And that way I have a better chance of getting all my ingredients mixed together. Plus I'm gonna show you what to do when it is in your bowl. 
All righty, let's get this sifted. Now, if you don't have a sifter, you could use a sieve or a strainer. And usually mine are hanging, my pots and pans are hanging right there above me. And I keep my sieve right there. And um, I would just grab it and show you, but it is out of reach right now. And so I think uh, we'll be fine. You know what it is. Um, I will sh definitely show you when we're in class. So we are almost to the end. And I just want to show you what's happening on the inside here. You can see where the large bits of flour are, and that's why we use a sifter. We want to get this flour nice and fine. Now, here's a word of caution that I think that everybody needs to be aware of. When you have your sifter, you can see I still have some stuff in here. And what I'm going to do is later off camera, I will take this over and I will clean it out just with a, um, what I can with a dry dish cloth. Um, if I don't have to wash my sifter, I don't because this will rust eventually. And then when I do this, rust will hop out and end up in the bowl. We don't need that. If you do have to wash your sifter, I like to turn my oven on and just get it warm and turn it right back off, make sure it's not too hot. And then I put this in and I let it dry in there after I've towel dried it when I do have to wash it, okay? All right, so I have my dry ingredients right here. And I need a wooden spoon. And this is one of my least favorites, actually. Let me get one of the ones that I like to use a little bit more. Here we go. If you recall from your notes, we need to, I want to just stir this around. We need to make a well. And that's for our dry ingredients. It's now time to get our liquid ingredients. And our recipe says that we're going to take a second bowl and we're going to whisk our eggs. So let's go ahead and put those in here. And I do like to whisk my nut before I add any other liquid ingredients. I just think it works better. There we go. You can see that's a nice whisk. All right, I'm gonna add my vanilla. And now I need to add my buttermilk. Oh, goodness gracious. So you know when I tell you that you need to get all of your ingredients, I mean your um, equipment on that equipment list, here is one item that I actually had out and I snagged it for using over there, which you'll see later. But I want to get all of this buttermilk out of here, and as much of it as I can, because you can see the buttermilk is thick and it wants to stay on the measuring cup. Here we go. Let's give this a whisk. And our recipe says to go ahead and whisk this up and then we're going to just mix it until it's combined. And you can see right there, it's mixed just until it's combined. All right. Now we're going to add the liquid to the dry. And remember that well, this is where it's going to come in handy. And again, this is really a necessary item or at least I think it is in the kitchen. We all need a rubber scraper. Okay. So we need to mix this up. I can go ahead and use my wooden spoon. I could use this. I am just gonna go ahead and use my rubber scraper because then I can get this. Because remember with quick breads, we are mixing this batter until it's combined. We're going to have lumps. You don't want to stir the daylights out of this. That's not a good idea. If we over stir, we risk tough pancakes. We don't need tough pancakes. We don't need hockey pucks. All right. 
The nice thing with a glass bowl is you can see if you have any areas where maybe you didn't get things mixed very well. And then we're going to let this sit. Let it stand for just a few minutes. And our um, recipe says to let it rest for 10 minutes. And there's a reason that it, they want us to let this rest for 10 minutes. I want you to pay attention. I'm trying to get the bowl really clean over there so that you can see this. But I want you to see what's going to happen. And um, I hope you can see here that we do have a lumpy batter. And as I move it around, you can kind of see um, some little air pockets or little air popping. You can even see bits of flour, and that's okay. We don't want this overmixed. So we're going to let this sit for 10 minutes. And while that's doing that, I just want to show you a couple of other things. When, or, um, when you're making pancakes, I think most of us probably serve our pancakes with some kind of syrup. And yes, absolutely, syrup is delicious. And it just makes our pancakes really yummy. But this is that time of year where we have those autumn flavors that we were talking about in class. Think about those autumn flavors. What can we do to bring those autumn flavors in and maybe add some sweetness? What I've done is over in my saucepan on the stove, I took a few apples, um, washed them, we cored them, we sliced them. We sliced them thin and to the apples, I added some brown sugar, cinnamon, um, some fresh grated nutmeg, I added a little bit of lemon juice because that helps with the enzymatic browning, which actually makes the apples look kind of not their best. And um, I added a little bit of water, stirred that up. Um, I added a little bit of butter to that and I stuck it on a low heat. And I've been going over and just stirring it and checking on it and seeing how it looks. Remember our safety, whenever we go to open or to lift the lid, Always open it away from you and you can see that steam. And then we can check on the apples and they are just coming along very nicely. Um, they are getting nice and soft, but not turning to mush. We don't want applesauce right now. And there's a lovely sauce in here that's going to go great for spooning onto our pancakes. I did bring out some syrup, some maple syrup, so that if we want to put that on, we certainly can do that. All right, so we're just gonna let this simmer a little bit longer and then we'll come back here. While we're waiting for the 10 minutes, I wanna talk to you about your griddles. Whether you have an electric griddle or a griddle that goes onto your um, cooktop, um, just make sure you know how to use it. Uh, make sure you figure out what temperature works best. For my pancakes, I'm gonna put them on 370 degrees on my electric griddle. Now this griddle has, um, you can tell it is uh, well-worn, had it for many years. The power that goes into the griddle, it has loosened over time. And so what we've done is we put a little block under here to keep this plugged in so that it doesn't unplug itself. Um, we were making pancakes one time and when we got finished and we were cleaning up and we picked the griddle up, our island was really hot. Um, we didn't have it um, up. And what had happened was that this just got too hot. It was too close to the counter. And so you need to be aware that, um, make sure you have good airflow. So you can see under here, we've got space. We've also brought it up off the counter because I don't want anything to happen to my counter. I don't want it to crack. And so I just bring that up and then I'm going to let our griddle come to the temperature that we need. All right. I hope that you are looking at the batter. Um, there's some stuff happening here. Um, we've got these little bubbles that are occurring. Pretty cool. I want you to think why that could be happening. We've got baking powder and baking soda mixing with an acid or buttermilk. They're actually, it's causing a reaction. It's producing a gas, and that's what's happening here. You're gonna see this batter become fluffy and light, okay? 
and it hasn't been 10 minutes yet, and I don't want to dip it at this time because I really want it to come to the where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got my griddle on. I'm letting it heat up. One of the things that I do need to do is to put butter on here before we use it. Know your griddle. Find out what it needs in order to keep from sticking. You don't want your pancakes sticking. If you've ever made cookies before, you know that they say that you should only put one in the oven first to make sure that you have enough space. You see how much space you need with your dough because of how they're going to rise if they're going to spread out on the baking pan. The same thing with pancakes. They say to do one first because sometimes when you do the first pancake, it doesn't turn out the best. And that can be because your griddle hasn't quite reached the right temperature. And um, you learn where the sweet spot is on your griddle. And you can see on mine, you can see where that heating element is because it's outlined on my griddle. The one thing I do want to caution you about is if you have a nonstick griddle, make sure that you let it cool. And any griddle, you should let cool before you wash it. But definitely in any nonstick surface, you want to let it cool before you clean it because if you don't, um, it can affect the finish. Also, you want to make sure you use a plastic coated, use plastic coated um, or silicone utensils on that griddle. Never use metal. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Here we have a spatula or a turner and it's metal. It does not get used on this griddle because of the um, nonstick coating. I will be using this plastic one that is made for nonstick um, or for coated um, uh, kitchen appliances. All right. So let's just have a little review. We had dry ingredients that we measured out and we had to stick them together. We put them in the bowl. We made a well. We had our liquid ingredients that we needed to mix together, get them incorporated well, and add them here. So if you're remembering what you've learned in class, you have your dry ingredients that you sift together in one bowl. Make a well. Second thing you do is mix all your liquid ingredients together. Get them mixed pretty good. Follow what your recipe says. The third thing you want to do is add your liquid ingredients to your dry ingredients and you want to mix them just until everything is incorporated and your flour, your dry ingredients are moistened. Once you do that, then you are ready to um, stir it just until it's moistened and then if you're going to add anything like nuts or any chocolate chips or any kind of fruit like blueberries, um, you would add those in and you would just gently fold those in. You don't want to stir them. It's not a cauldron, right? You're going to over mix. So you're just going to fold those in. All right. I really hope you can see what's happening here. And with the little bubbles that are popping on top, it's exactly what we need. My recipe says that I want to use a third to a half a cup of batter to scoop onto my griddle. But before I do that, I do need to add some butter. And I'm gonna also want my pastry brush. So with using this griddle, I know where my hot spots are. I know the areas that like that are more prone to sticking. And that's sometimes over on this end. So I really want to make sure I get that. Now you have to be careful with your butter. Because if this griddle is too hot, what's going to happen to your butter is it's going to burn. And you don't want burnt butter. It's not going to taste good. Okay. So I've got that on there. And because you can see my butter is cold, I'm going to let that just adjust a little bit to the temperature that I have here. And then we're going to put some pancake batter on here and see what we get. All right, I've got two ladles. Which do I want? It depends upon how big I want these pancakes when I'm ready to serve them. I'm going to go ahead and go with the larger one. And I'm just going to dip in here. And I'm going to look here. And I'm going, hmm, is this too thick? What do you guys think? Let's find out. 
Let's make one. If it is too thick, we'll add a little bit of buttermilk to this and thin it just slightly. This is where you definitely don't want your griddle too hot because we have a thicker batter. It's going to take longer to cook. And you know what? As I'm looking at that, we're golden. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more on here. There we go. Maybe one more. I'm usually using the smaller one, but for today, I'm going to go ahead and put this right there. So how do you know when it's the right time to flip these over? Because if you go and attack these too soon, they're going to stick, and we don't want that. So you want to watch these cook, and you want to watch for bubbles to start occurring around the outside edges of your pancakes. And when you see that, then you can go and you can look at them. You'll also start to see where they're firming up. Now this one I put on a little bit before these other two, and so if you look carefully, you can see where this is starting to cook. And you can see the difference in how the edge here looks and the edge over there. The other thing I do is I butter my spatula I make sure I cover this entire side as well as this, because think about it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check. I don't want my pancake batter sticking here, nor do I want it sticking here. All right, don't rush this process. Let it do its thing. I think sometimes we get in a hurry and we're like, oh my gosh, I don't want it to burn. I think I need to flip them. But am I seeing any bubbles occurring on the edges? If you're in doubt, you can take just the edge and come over and tip it and flip it. Look at that, it's gorgeous. It's nice and golden brown. Look at that puff. We definitely want to let that continue to cook. All right, let's check over here and see what's happening. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. All righty. Boom. Nice. Is this one ready? Yes, it is. Oh, I got it a little close to the edge there. We might have to adjust it in a little bit, but not right now. We don't want to move it right now. We want to let it continue to do its little magic. Okay. I want you to think about pancakes. I want you to think about your family. Pancakes are not just for breakfast. We love breakfast food for dinner. So this is our dinner. We're gonna have pancakes for dinner. And um, you can cook up some sausage or bacon or whatever you like to have on the side. I've also got the fruit that I'm gonna be adding to this. Um, you can make a glass of chocolate milk or have some juice, whatever your favorite beverage is, a cup of hot tea, maybe some cider, I don't know, whatever you'd like to have. Get it ready and you'll have a lovely dinner. And it's very easy to do. And if you've got younger siblings or if you've got any cousins in your house that are little, just some little kids around that, that live with you or come to visit, this is great because you don't just have to make your pancakes round. You can make them in shapes and you can make letters and you can make numbers and you can do little tiny ones they are called silver dollar you would use just like a tablespoon and you know like that you would use maybe for soup and you could put that on and then you can have them learn how to count with that oh my gosh that is a ton of fun all right guys i know i'm coming out of camera but i'm getting a plate out of the drawer here where i keep them warm and let's take a look at what we have. All right. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? These are amazing. Amazing. What I like to do, even sometimes before I take them off, let me just grab this real quick. What I did earlier is I just took a little tiny pan that I have and I melted some butter 
and you can just take it right here and put a little bit of butter on these so they're nice and melted before you even take it off oh my gosh oh look at the sizzle <laughs> yum all right let me pull that off okay and before